Good afternoon. I'm board certified civil trial lawyer, Jeff Edelman. Today, we were supposed to have a guest talking about immigration on the show, but believe it or not, my guest had jury duty. That's right. Even lawyers get called for jury duty. So we'll have to reschedule that. And I thought as long as I promised everybody we'd be doing a show today, why not put something out there showing a little bit about what personal injury trial lawyers do. So what I did was I put together some of the slides that I've used for mediations and trials over the years. And I kind of wanted to give you a taste of the creativity that we have to use to try to distinguish our cases among the many people that are injured in different ways through car accidents, slip and falls, negligent security claims. And I thought that might be helpful. Also, just wanted to let you know, uh, if you haven't received your copy of Choosing the Right Lawyer is No Accident, please call me or email me. The number is on the screen. My email address is jeff at edelmanlawyers.com. We can send it to you through PDF, or I can send you a copy if you send me your address. I'm happy to do that. So let's get started. And I'm going to go, first of all, in showing you obviously a car accident photo of a car that's pretty badly damaged from a crash. Now, you want to show photographs like this to a jury or an adjuster because obviously a picture tells a thousand words. And what the insurance adjusters love to do is show photographs of minimal property damage. This is not minimal property damage. So we would want to make sure that this has a prominent place for the jury to see it or for the adjuster to see it. This is from a negligent security case that I did many years ago. And I had a negligent security expert witness who we hired, Michael Zuvis, who is the former chief of police for Miami Shores. And what he said was that in order to have a proper security program for a condominium or a townhouse complex, you have to have all the ingredients or it's not right. He compared it to a bowl of chili. If you leave one item out, it's no good. So I thought that was a really great analogy to use. So what we did was, I did this through a uh, graphic designer, Michelle Gervolino, who's very talented. And I told her I was looking for some type of chili pot or a cauldron, and so we did this. And then we added all of the different elements of a negligent security claim, what would be an effective security program, according to Chief Zuvis. Man gate, a roving guard, like on a golf cart, video surveillance, fence and lighting, and a crime watch program. He said, if you have these things, it's greatly going to reduce the ability of a uh, a bad actor to cause harm to somebody. Now, what happened here was these were not present. There was no video surveillance. There wasn't a crime watch program. There were giant, giant holes in the fence that the criminals got through and attacked my client and beat him within an inch of his life. He had to have surgery for a brain bleed. Man gate, the gate was up. That's kind of uh, a waste of a resource right there. Then roving guard, we actually had a letter from the security company in this case stating to the property owner not to cut the manned guard that would leave residents exposed. You know I use that uh, to get this case eventually resolved. And uh, it was a devastating piece of evidence. We also handle slip and fall cases, trip and fall cases, when you would expect that with personal injury claims. But what's important is photographic evidence, not just from you if something happens, but you want to make sure your attorney is thinking about other ways of getting photographs of how it looked before, showing that the landowner had notice that there was a problem. That's the key, notice. Now, I'll show you something here, and you probably won't believe 
this story. I'm going to tell it anyway, and maybe you'll believe it. I was preparing a client for a her deposition, and I said, show me the pathway that you took to get to the restaurant. She shows me on Google Street View. And then I notice, as you can see on the left-hand side, that there are guardrails there. Well, when you see how it looks days after the accident, where she fell, which is at that end of that white line in picture number two, there's no guardrails. And in fact, that white line does not extend to the full length of the change in elevation on that ramp. So we put those two together and that was very effective in making the case of negligence that the landowner knew or should have known. I recently had a case where we also used Google, Google Street View to find a pothole that somebody stepped in. It was in the Google Street View and it was pretty obvious that it should have been repaired well before my client fell in it. Now, obviously we gotta talk about medicine. That's why we're there. You could have a horrific accident, but if you're not hurt, there's no personal injury claim. Now this poor lady had a neck injury with herniated discs and needed to get a cervical discectomy infusion. You can see if you look at the document, if you look at that picture over there, those are metal plates with screws that are put in her neck. Those are going to be there for the rest of her life. So you wanna make sure that you use that and it's an effective way of showing just how bad uh, something is. Another way is we show a chronology and I like to do this by showing like a body board, showing all the different areas of the body that were affected by the accident and what type of procedures were done. So as you can see here, the first procedure that was done for this client was a wrist fracture surgery. You can see the plating, you see the screws, uh, that hurts just looking at it. So obviously we need to show these things just to show the jury how bad it is. Then we show other surgeries and those are in red. And you can see she actually needed to have her foot repaired with pins and screws. Injections, getting your neck injected with a needle about this big, that's no picnic. And this poor lady had to have it done six times in her neck for different reasons. These are epidurals or facet injections, can also be rhizotomies, which are sometimes called nerve ablations. They actually take a needle and they burn the nerve root so that the client, the patient does not have that pain sensation. Now, sometimes that's an effective way of controlling it because you're also not putting any medicine in. So nerve ablations, actually I've found to be more effective in a lot of cases than a lot of the cortisone injections for my clients. Here we have another surgery for the shoulder and we finish it out with more, excuse me, with more uh, injections into the low back. So you show that and it kind of really tells the tale um, through a picture because otherwise you're having the jury look through huge amount of records. I mean, it's hard for us to read them. I can imagine somebody who's not used to it going through them and trying to do it within the scope of a few hours or even a day or two. This is a verdict form from a case. Uh, as you can see from the verdict form, uh, it's a slip and fall case. Now, a lot of people don't understand that with a slip and fall case or any case where the negligence is disputed, meaning the defendant's not agreeing they're at fault, a jury can decide percentage wise how much the defendant's at fault and how much the plaintiff is at fault. They could decide it's 50-50. They could say the defendant's 70% at fault and put 30% on the plaintiff or even reverse it. 
So that's something that Florida law allows us to do. It's called comparative negligence. So the first question on this verdict form is, was the defendant negligent? If the jury checks no, the case is over, there is no recovery for the plaintiff. But if the jury checks yes, they go to the next question, which is, was the plaintiff at all negligent? Now, if they check yes, then they get to decide on the next question what that percentage of negligence is for both parties. Keep in mind, if they check no, then it's 100% against the defendant. Then we go through the damages, and you can see the damages are for past medical, future medical, past pain and suffering, future pain and suffering, uh, all of the different things that make up the elements of a personal injury claim. So let's say, for example, the jury thought that the damages in this case were worth a million dollars, but they thought that the plaintiff was 25% responsible for the fall. Then the jury award would be $750,000. That's how it works. You do the total amount of the damages, and then you take the comparative negligence, you take the percentage off of what the plaintiff may be responsible for, deduct it, and that's your damage award. Now, again, if you haven't received a copy of Choosing the Right Lawyer is No Accident, again, contact me. I'll send you a PDF copy. I'll send you the, the link. I'll send you a hard copy if you'd like. If you have any other questions regarding personal injury claims, again, I am a board-certified civil trial lawyer. That means that I have been certified by the Florida Bar to have tried the requisite amount of cases. I've been vetted by my peers, defense counsel, judges, to certify that I am competent in civil trial. The charge is the same for civil trial lawyers who are certified as uncertified. So the bottom line is when you're looking at percentages for personal injury claims, uh, claims it's one third of whatever is collected out of suit, you would get two thirds. 40% if it's in suit, you get 60%. But what I will guarantee you and any attorney doing personal injury claims should guarantee you is that if it turns out that the attorney is making more money than you, the net, then they should put it all together and divide it 50-50. For example, after all the medical and the costs and the attorney's fees are paid, the client's netting 1,000 and the attorney is netting 20,000, we put it together and we split it 50-50. That's just how we do business. We know that you've been a victim in an accident or a fall and we don't want you to walk away from the experience thinking that the attorney was not looking out for you and trying to do the best job as possible. So that's really important. And you want to make sure if you are hiring a personal injury attorney that they are doing that. If you have any questions about personal injury claims, feel free to give me a call anytime. Again, my name is Jeff Edelman, 954-341-2777. Or you can email me at jeff at edelmanlawyers.com. Be well.